here's just some fun facts that I found recently, is 90% of all the data that is out there online has really been created in the last two years. Also, today it would take a person approximately 181 million years to download all the data from the internet with an average download speed of 44 Mbps. And this is what I found really interesting, and this really pertains to what we'll be talking about today, is that in 2012, roughly 22% of all the data that was out there for analysis coming from surveillance, entertainment, social media, you know, your searches online, about 22% of it you could really use for analysis and market into that. That number is jumping, and they predicted to jump to about 37%. So about a third of all the data that's out there will be able to be analyzed and used for marketing efforts. And we're all starting to see that now just in our daily lives, um, you know, as far as relevant ads being shown to us, relevant emails, but that's all coming from data. So what's my point? Point is, there's a lot of data out there, okay? And this is just a graph that we found for 2019. You know, not going to go through it all, but this is just a snapshot of 60 seconds, the amount of data that is generated online. So everything from Facebook has a million people log in in that minute to the fact that, you know, 1.188 million emails are sent within a minute. And, you know, you can go through all this. I'm not going to um, list everything else, but there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of data out there. And this is all data that's available for companies to use for their marketing efforts and other efforts. But the challenge is, this is awesome for marketers, but the challenge is all these companies are purchasing this data, but they quickly find themselves drowning in that data. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Brooke. So we're going to start out with data ownership. What does data ownership mean? So the official definition is the act of having legal rights and complete control over a single piece or set of data elements. So it really comes down to who is the rightful owner of the data assets, which includes the acquisition, the use, and the distribution policy. Whoever owns the data also has the ability to assign, share, or surrender these privileges, which is really only important in larger companies with huge centralized databases. Which brings us to data sources. Where is your data coming from? You have your customer databases, which are typically people that you have communicated directly with, have purchases from, or possibly from your sales team. And this is automatic ownership. You also have third-party data that can come from a vendor or partner. And an example of this would be a purchase acquisition list, where the rights of the data are defined by whoever is giving you the data. So typically, it's a one-time use for a campaign or unlimited use. And that moves on to understand your data sources. So identify your data sources. If it's from a consumer list, is it coming from a form fill or is it coming from a purchase? If it's coming from a third party, where are they getting their data? Do you know how they're collecting it? Do you know where it's sourced from? Additionally, if you're using a third party vendor, do you know how often they update their data and are you scheduled to receive the data refreshes? And is all data created equal? Obviously the answer to this one is no. A one-time conference list should be ranked and treated a lot differently than data from a trusted partner. And in an enterprise setting, the term ownership generally assigns a level of accountability and responsibility for specific data sets. And that brings us to our next topic, which is fundamentals of data governance. So the official definition of data governance refers to the general management of the integrity, usability, security, and availability of the data used in the enterprise, which is a fancy way of saying data maintenance. And this can be a cross-departmental cross team, including voices from varied users. So just make sure if you're getting more than one person involved in your data maintenance, that there's strict guidelines on how people are treating your data and don't get too many hands in the pot because that leaves a lot of margin open for error. And then this can also create functional data flows between applications. An example of this would be your customer order system and your CRM system. 